this is the camera that I use on mine. So like, even if let's say I tried to do it on this one, it was acting up on here as well. See? So worst case scenario, this- Oh, now you want to- Gosh, that's so crazy. I missed some good photo op time right here on the show. Oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. But that's the journey, man. Yeah. You live and learn. It's tough. Man, you know how many mixes I had to screw up in order to get the ones right? It's so tough, dog. You want to start working now, my boy? That's crazy. How y'all doing? I'm Reginald Bullock here with Trey for Just Living Life, and this is our second yep. time recording. So thank you for rejoining us. And Trey, what do you have to say? I got a question. Like, should we call this episode two or episode one? I had a person as episode one because, you know, the pilot was the last time. So that's why I just wanted to make sure. You said two, but, you know, they might have gotten confused. So I just want to make sure they understand. I, I was going to classify it as episode one. You got any problems with that? I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Now, the difference is, though, suppose we edit it and break it into different sections. Mm. Like the first one we did was pretty long. It was. Pretty how good. many? How long was it? I think I had like 23 to 26 segments out of that. <laughs> yeah. So is each segment an episode? It's uh, like the overall thing would be an episode. Each one, each smaller piece, each smaller video would be a segment in itself. So that's what it'll be. But each overall video. Like the long one, that hour long, two hour long. So E1, yeah. S1, E1, S2, yeah. E1, S3. So this is E2. This will be E1. We'll make this one E1. Let's make this one E1. What was the last one? The pilot, E0. Okay. <laughs> this is us, you know, just living life here with Trey. And this is reality. And, and the thing that we wanted to do was to have two people who are not necessarily putting things together in a static way that, you know, we rehearsed this for days and days and days, and now you're getting the show based on how we rehearsed it. No, you're getting authentic, real talk from real brothers who live real life because we just live and we're sharing it with you. And what you just heard is an example of just how things come together. Yeah. And that's, re that's the reality of how things come together in life. So. Exactly. Exactly. That was a very ad hoc question. <laughs> it was a very hot ad hoc question I gave you. But um, I just wanted to say, you know, we can we can kind of start off the show real fast. Uh, okay, good. Let the keys drop there. Um, how have you been living so far, Reggie? Like, how have you been living? I have been living aggressive. This is August, and I'm preparing for September, October, November. Yeah. You know, I've written some books. I'm thinking about my fifth book that I want to write. And it's just time moves so fast. And either you keep up with it or you get left behind. I just got back from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I was up there uh, for three or four days. And then pr prior to this, during our gap between that last section or segment mm. or episode or pilot, I went to New Orleans for a week. So Collins. I've been I've been busy, man, and just getting things together as a keynote speaker. I'm writing various talk tracks. Uh, my agent and I just put together a presentation where I should be talking to all these universities in September. So I've written several talk tracks specifically for students to get them an understanding of how to become the best version of themselves as students. And why should they go to school? Why should they study? Why should they get their hustle on? Why should they go for a 4.0? And why shouldn't they do certain things, right? Right. And then also, what's the benefit to the institution itself? What's the benefit to the parents? Yep. And, and doing my research, here's a, here's a fact. The number one problem at all universities and colleges is mental health. Hmm. I didn't know that. Mental health. And so it goes closer to, the, to what I'm talking about, becoming the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. If they're not even on that track or that mindset or that thought process, well, there you have it. There. They and need help. So, And anyway. I'm glad mental health has been talked about a lot more to emphasize a lot more. Because, you know, like like you said, like last time we talked, you know, it, it's hard to get to ask for help. 
So, you know, that causes a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on you. So it's, it's good that people are now having finding avenues to essentially just vent like that. And so so how am I living? I'm, I'm there and we're looking at making me the keynote speaker at a lot of these universities to mm-hmm. come and help these students beyond just academics. So how you live? I'm living pretty good. Um, it's been interesting times. Um, trying to be a little busy, a little active, trying to plan some things out, trying to get a business formulated properly. So you said trying three times. I am. I am. I am. No, no, I, am no. I am. I am. You got to do more than try. Well, when I say I get, oh, I am doing, I'm formalizing the plan. I'm working out the kinks, looking up like numbers, doing my due diligence, stuff like that. Um, fun fact too, ladies and gentlemen, listen, okay. I gotta, I gotta say this. I definitely had the dog come back. Like, Back in the house? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I did. Wait was, a minute. Was, did, was, this, did the dog come back by itself? So my man hit me up. He was like, he wanted to like crash like one more day. I'm like, all right, that's doable. Because again, he auditioned well. Remember, we talked about that. So he crashed at your house for one more day. Yeah, he crashed in my house for one more with day. With the dog. With the dog. The big with, dog. Yeah, the big dog. And so with that, I'm like, he auditioned well last time. It's cool. Um, so how did it go? Yeah, Red, it was all right. It was all right. I ain't going to lie to you. It was all right. Up until the point where, bro. <laughs> kept saying, I, I was about yeah. to say it, so it didn't go well. Like, yeah, <laughs> like it went all right. Up until the point where Buddy sat up there and, like, almost kind of broke the pool table. He didn't want to get Buddy's back the in dog. the cage. Yeah, like that there. Like, when I say Buddy, that's the dog okay. I'm talking about. And, like, he, he almost broke the pool table. Um, he, he broke out of his cage like twice, you know, I'm like, dag, that's tough. He didn't break anything. I'm like, fortunately, right. Right. And I'm like, he got out of his cage. So clearly he's like, he uses intelligence and, um, he made, he, he made it do what it do. But outside of that, like, I'm, I, you know, I realized I'm not going to have a dog over my house. Before. So you said that the dog interviewed well, yeah, he, yeah, he, he, this is indicative well. of real life. Yeah. We talk about how we live in. People have nice resumes. Looks good on paper. They show up for an interview, wax eloquent. Five, six months into the job, you want to fire them because they are not what you thought they were. Exactly. And you still need what you thought you what you had. So the dog did the dog misrepresent it? He might have. I think he lied. I'm full. I, I'm. 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 I'm confident he lied early on. So how long did the dog stay? So I told him from like it was like Saturday to Sunday, so it was quick. Okay. But yeah, like I definitely put the dog out. Like I put him on the poke. Like I had to because if it was either that or I tied him up on the tree. <laughs> so so do they know that this can never happen again? I, uh, or well, you, are I, well, you going to wait till the next time and then just say no? Well, I mean, it's it's not gonna happen again. I mean, I, I don't I don't know if he's ever gonna ask me again. Like you know what I'm saying? But I don't mind saying no this next come around. Like I I don't mind. It's, I, it's nothing to do with my man's at all. I'm not even talking. I'm not even throwing shade on my man's. It's it's, it's mostly just funny because like it's talk, I'm shui, right? Yeah. You, you, this your house is how you live in, and all of a sudden you bring in another. Uh, I don't want to say animal, mm. but you you bring in another entity because it could have been a person. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And it could have been a cat. Mm. It could have been, you know, some of the frat brothers. It could have been anything. Right. Anything. Or anybody. So, yeah. And if that feng shui is not right, it's mm. not right. Mm-hmm. It could have mm-hmm. been a dog that's perfect. Yeah. And you tell your boy, you know, I tell you what, the dog can stay. You got it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so Perfect. it could have been that. So exactly. That's the follow up of how you live. Yep. No, that is. That is. Now. I didn't want to talk about too much about how we live in. Okay. Because you know, they they probably just waiting to see what we're talking about. I don't want I don't want to bore them too well, let's much. Get right? to I don't want to bore them too much. What are we but gonna talk about this time? I wanted to talk about this, right? Because you know, it last episode was good. It was a pilot, you know, we're we're building, we're laying that foundation. So that's the topic right now that I want to talk about. Topic number one, foundation. Building foundation. that foundation. Yeah. And when I mean by foundation, I'll give my definition. I kind of wrote some things down here for a little All right. What's your definition on foundation? So like when, when I say foundation, I mean that baseline makeup of yours, if you will, that guideline for yourself, if you will. Like when I when I'm in audit, I, I think of like, you know, the standards and guidelines that you have to follow. That, right. You get a clean opinion. Exactly. So that, that so that foundation that you have to follow, that's what I think of when I say foundation. What, what, what what comes to your mind when you think of foundation, building that foundation? Well, I think that it starts with what you bring to the table initially. Mm-hmm. 
because you talk about building the foundation, but generally people have something already. Mm -hmm. So they have a foundation. So to your point, what's the baseline? What are you already working with? Exactly. The other piece is what are you trying to build? What's the strategic plan? What's your aim? What's your goal? What's your objective? Because therein lies, if you're building a house, all right, you know, what kind of house are you building? Are you building a house up north where heating and air conditioning and, and, and protection from the cold is one thing? Mm -hmm. Or are you building a house in the south where you can actually run your hand through the house because you're not really worried about the cold, but you do need to be worried about hurricanes and things like that. So that whole foundation piece, education, training, mm -hmm. development, mm -hmm. uh, environment, culture. Your emotional intelligence, confidence, confidence, strength. Um, do you know how to dress appropriately? So what do you come to the table with when you're trying to do something? And if you're trying to build a business, a whole different structure of a foundation. If you're trying to be a professional in one of the, you know, doctor, lawyer, or yep. one of those certified types of professions, then what's the foundation for that, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just go and, and become a physician without certain foundational elements of growth. So I think it can go any direction, but it depends on what you want to do ultimately. Well, so that, that, that's interesting you said what do you want to do ultimately, because I was going to ask, when does your foundation, building your foundation truly begin? Because, you know, I think maybe early on, right, like all right, you got to get that confidence. Confidence is instilled in you early on. I think you can also develop confidence, but certain, sometimes I think conf like certain things, like certain you intangibles. Confidence is instilled in you? It can be instilled in you early on. Because like, let's say, for example, if your family supporting you, you might have a tremendous confidence going out into the world. Whereas if, if you're not getting that support, you might not be that confident. Okay. So you might okay. be a little more reserved. That's what I'm coming that, from. That, that, that. So that I mean, sense. so that's what I was thinking of initially. But then I'm also realizing, too, people gain confidence all the time. So, I mean, you can build, you can sort of build a foundation maybe later on in life, too. So I was wondering, when do you think that foundation truly begins? Is it early on or is it just whenever your journey, be, like whenever is ad hoc, I guess? Man, it reminds me of a sales thing we used to say, soon and often. You know, soon when do you often. close a sale? Soon and often. When do you build a foundation? Mm -hmm. Soon and often. It's kind of like reaping the harvest and sowing the seed prior to reaping the harvest. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what this winter is going to look like. You do know that you're going to need something to eat. Right. But the one thing you definitely know is you're not going to have nothing if you don't sow those seeds. Mm -hmm. So sowing the seeds is building the foundation. You don't necessarily know all of the requirements that you're going to need, mm -hmm. but you know you're going to need something. I'm a keynote speaker. So part of the foundation is to be able to get up on stage and speak with a coherent thought to an audience. Mm. That can be done in all different types of ways and all different types of audience. But the basic foundation that I need to work on all of the time is the ability to articulate the English language in a way that other people understand. Right. And same thing if you're doing physical things, right? If you're planning on being in any kind of physical activity, then you need to get in shape. Whether you're a basketball player, sports, or golf, or a construction work, or anything that requires lifting or endurance mm. uh, and cardio, then at some point you should have been getting yourself in shape. You don't know what you're going to end up doing ultimately. Right. You just have goals, desires, dreams, aspirations. Mm. But you do know that in order to do any of that kind of stuff, there's a basic foundation. Yeah. So you start soon. And then what about the unknown? Right. There's yeah. so many things that I, I'm trained in the Boy Scouts. We've trained in first aid. Mm -hmm. Hope we never need it. Mm -hmm. But should anything happen, I know how to do it. I know how to tie, you know, 12, 15 knots. Mm -hmm. All right. How often do I tie knots? Well, we tie them on our shoes and everything else. Right. But there are certain knots that when you need them, you need them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking it starts maybe early on that foundation. Because, like, there's certain things that I know I I guess, take with me nowadays mm -hmm. that I feel like kind of, I don't know, started when I was younger. Like just how I how I view people, how I view the world. I kind of want to keep that same mindset. Like obviously I've grown and evolved and realized some things are like just, you know, a dream and whatnot. But I, I do think some of my, a, a solid amount of my foundation came from like early on. But where did it come from? Like, did you just decide, I'm going to give myself a foundation or were there other people that saw 
something that you didn't know or had influence over that. And as a result of others, you mm -hmm. now have advantage. It might be the result of others, but when I say results of others, it's like I thought, okay, well, maybe I need to change this because I initially like, like, for example, okay, so I, I like sports. I love sports. I knew I always wanted to do something in sports. But then when I also thought about it, saying that out loud at a certain point in time, I'm like, eh, that might not sound the best. It might not sound the most mature, whatever the case may be. But so I always thought maybe sports, even in anime, I want to do that. And I guess now I'm kind of realizing, well, I, I let others kind of sway my decision making. And like I thought I had like a pretty solid foundation early on. So I guess that's where I'm coming from with it now. It's like I I assumed, I guess back then I had a solid foundation. I just let it change. And I'm curious if other people felt that same way too. I mean, Simone Biles, mm -hmm. one of the greatest female gymnasts in the world. Well, actually the greatest now. And so the point is, where did her foundation come from, right? Yeah. So I think it's a journey that we all walk. And as we are walking that journey, we discover things along that walk. Mm -hmm. You know, I hike. So in the woods, I may come across certain different plants that I can eat. So I'm, I can't. If I'm hungry, I'll eat. Or I may throw some stuff in my pocket. Right. I come across water I can drink. So as you walk in the journey, you have an opportunity to learn, to experience, to grow from that moment. Now, that's a choice. So to your point, some things came because other people helped you to have that foundation. Right. But as you're walking your journey, you get choices every single day. And 10 years from now, when you look back, <clears throat> you wish you made a better choice, mm -hmm. which would have given you the foundation mm -hmm. for 10 years hence to do this thing that you want to do that you don't have the foundation for. That's called <laughs> wake up call experience. <laughs> and now what do you do for the next 10 years? Right. Yeah. And so it, it's just dynamic for everybody and yeah. cultures. and. And people, you know, and, and, and just means it. You could take 10 million different people and have 10 million different foundations. That's fair. That's fair. Now, it is it wise, I guess, to see someone else's foundation, realize, you know, you want to make a change? No, actually, no, better question. Can you change a foundation? And how easily can you change one if so? So I think you can build upon a foundation. Mm -hmm. To that extent, you are changing. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it's hard to erase a foundation, mm -hmm. um, but I do believe that you can build upon foundations. Okay. I okay. went to Greek, Greece one time, and we were walking across this glass floor, a big floor, it wasn't just a small floor, but it was overlooking an entire city. So they built the city on a city and built another city on that city. This percent, this city we could see because it was glass floor. Right. Well, once upon a time that city was a foundation. Yeah. And then it became the foundation for another city. Yeah. So I think that that's the building blocks. That's walking the journey. You can change your foundation. My foundation was poor kid from the projects. Okay. Yeah. Food stamps. You know, government assistance. Mm. You know, living in the hood, lunch tickets to go to school and get a lunch meal or whatever. That was my foundation. And so I built upon that. Okay. Okay. So your upbringing, essentially, you would say that was the class. Play, or that's what you classify as your foundation person. I know you find you, you defined yourself as a hustler. Mm -hmm. So you was, okay. Um, that, was, that was my actual next question. Like, what was the foundation of a hustler? So it sounds like it's just, it, it it's. It's catered towards you, your lifestyle, your upbringing, what makes you up in the day, your DNA, your makeup. So um, and, and, and you talked about to changing a foundation or well, we talked about changing a foundation, building upon a foundation. So what's the difference for you between building upon a foundation and or I guess building a foundation versus expanding? Because I think. Some people think that it might be the same thing, but I, I, I personally think it's different. So why well, do you think it's different? So I think when when you think building a foundation, that's like starting up, right? Like, like you said, like there was a foundation that was put on top of something else. Well, like expansion is that put on top of something I else. Yes, yeah, so that's so why. To I, that extent, yeah, you're true. I mean, Amazon built the foundation, mm -hmm. and then they expanded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so 
And they're still expanding, right? You right. got AWS. That's an expansion of what they had already built. Mm-hmm. We're saying the same thing. Right. But if we were to expound upon the expansion of the foundation, mm-hmm. right, I think it is, do you have a solid foundation that no matter what, it's going to it's gonna stand through and, 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 it's, and it's solid? Mm-hmm. And if you did nothing else, that foundation in and of itself allows you to grow. Right. At whatever the normal rate is mm-hmm. of growth. You know, if you're building houses, well, you know, you used to build, you know, 10 houses and now you build 20 and now you build 100. Mm-hmm. But the expansion of it could be you don't just build houses, you handle landscaping, you handle financing, you handle other types of real estate, not mm-hmm. just houses. You deal with office buildings and you deal with farmland and now you're selling equipment. Mm-hmm. And, and now you're dealing with all of the appliances that go into the house. Now you have an HGTV channel and you're selling other stuff. And now you have, and folks come from the hip hop community, pimp my house, you know? (laughs) And so that's expansion, Mm -hmm. but you started off just building houses. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, when you have a strong foundation, right, I think it's very easy to, to, to build upon. Mm -hmm. But then I also think maybe it's not though, because it's still you're, you're you're still building, you're still evolving, you're still growing. So would you say it's str- it, it's it's easy to build upon a strong foundation, or is it just an easier task compared to if you're not? Because I I I started to think it's easy, but I realized you know it's still hard work. You're still hustling in the day. So I think some people might think it's easy, and I, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that because I, I kind of changed my my pro- my thought process. I think it's easier, mm. but not easy. Mm-hmm. Having a foundation, a solid foundation, is it's solid. It's good. You can work with that. Right. Here's an example. There are so many different types of structures mm-hmm. that are built over top of water. But in order for those structures to be there, they must have a foundation. Right. It starts with pylons in the ground, building a bridge. Yeah. Right. And so Somehow you got to dig into the ground, get it solid, build all these piles, and then work from that mm-hmm. to build a foundation. Once you have that foundation, you can go high, you can go wide, you can do whatever you need to do. Mm-hmm. But until you have that foundation, so those are the pilings there. Now you can you can go in many different directions from there. I, I think that therefore, once you have that, it's easier to put a lighting system on a bridge. Mm-hmm. It's easier to expand a bridge. Mm-hmm. It's easier to improve upon a bridge. But until you had that solid foundation of a bridge, the rest of the stuff can never happen. Okay, okay. Now, if, what, if you're, what if you're trying to expand upon a shaky foundation? What's the... It, actually, let me ask this. It's from, called risk. It's called risk? Mm-hmm. There's also positive risk too, though. Like I, I think sometimes when you're building upon a strong foundation, you can have risk as well too. Like oh, it, definitely can have risk. Yeah, but, but if you're building upon a shaky foundation, the virtue, the, the simple fact that it's shaky, mm-hmm. is that a foundation? I mean, some people like to work with shaky. I get it, but that's not a foundation. That's fair. That's fair. It's not a good foundation to build upon. So when you were saying, or we were talking earlier about like it, it's not, it's hard to tear down and erase a foundation. When I'm thinking, I didn't of, say that. I thought you said that earlier. In terms of like, it's harder to like. Like you said, it was harder to like erase a foundation completely. No, I didn't say erase it completely. I don't think I said that. We'll see in the replay. Yeah, we'll see in the replay. <laughs> I don't think I said erase it completely. We may even talk with something else. But go ahead. Okay. So, so is, if if you if you have a shaky foundation, how hard is it to erase that shaky foundation? Because to me. I realized, okay, well, some some things I, I probably built Why upon myself. Why would you want to erase any foundation you know, to include a shaky foundation? Well, I mean, if you build so upon a shaky, well, if you build upon a shaky foundation, like if you're building upon a house and it has a terrible foundation, I mean, you can destroy the foundation. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, should you, I guess, like destroy it? Yeah, like, or and and then how hard is that destruction of the of the? Uh, I mean. It depends on what industry we're talking about. So sometimes you can, you know, sure up your foundation. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't do it and it's shaky, then yeah, it it will, it could destroy itself. For instance, um, 
Blockbusters versus Netflix. Mm. Blockbusters had a strong foundation. And Netflix had, or Redbox, whatever it was, had a, had a strong them, yeah. foundation. And then it became shaky. Mm. Blockbuster had the opportunity to shore up its foundation. Mm. It didn't. And then it went out of business. It crumbled. See, that could have been. So I guess when when I'm thinking of like my business, right? Like for example, the, the the one I was telling you about, mm-hmm. I'm thinking of, okay, what do I want it to be now? How can it evolve? Like things like that. I'm trying to think, okay, can I go nationwide? Mm-hmm. Can I be international? Like who knows? So I guess in, in using Blockbuster as that example, did, did they really have a strong foundation? Because it seems like maybe they didn't, have the tools to evolve. Now they have a strong foundation. They just didn't have completion. Mm, okay. I mean, okay. they had the opportunity. It was presented to them. Mm. They could have bought Netflix. Okay. Okay. They, they did not believe in the the future of internet television and movies. Okay. Okay. They didn't believe in that. Okay. The big disc that you put into a machine is it, and we're the top of the world. Right. See. <laughs> I don't know why I've been thinking maybe the foundation should think like, like if you haven't thought of what your foundation could expand into, I don't know if I want to call you like a good, I call that a good foundation. For example, if somebody who's like playing basketball, right. If they're trying to train and all this good stuff, but what do you think you ultimately can be? Like, what have you, like, what, what about basketball? Have you studied? Like, have you looked at your parents say, okay, well, I might be this tall, or I, I need to get this skill set and see because it like Steph Curry probably just saw himself as a shooter mm-hmm. and he evolved, blossomed into something spectacular, but he probably practiced this stuff at home too. Right, right. So his foundation looks pretty great right now because he probably thought of all this stuff too. So like when 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 I see people who haven't evolved or can't evolve, but they have a solid foundation, I'm thinking maybe you didn't have the best foundation because your foundation no, is short term. They could have a solid foundation and no poor work ethic. Okay. Or lack of okay. motivation. Or be late. Oh, that's tough. Or just haven't been exposed to the same things that other people were exposed to. Or didn't have the means and the resources to take it further to do what they wanted to do. That's tough. Because I remember, uh, so we were talking about hustler and intelligence and stuff like that. I, I kind of think of like planning, right? Mm-hmm. And so when I think of like foundation, that requires some planning. At least I would hope so. Because we not we, everybody knows how to plan. Yeah, but that's a foundation in and of itself, right? That's true. How do you learn how to plan if nobody's ever taught you how to plan? Just because you can dribble a basketball and, and and shoot, all right, at the park, but that's your basically the best you're ever going to be in that respect until you receive some other external forces mm. or opportunities. Okay. okay. But if nothing or no one is helping you, you know, then how are you going to get there? Yeah, that's fair too. Okay, so maybe it might have been a little harsh then. I mean, you can't necessarily predict 2030 right now, can you? No, not really. But there's a lot of intel and information out there currently that can help, help you, you to do that, but you haven't read it yet. Right. You haven't been exposed to it yet. Right. You know, your your knowledge of, of generative AI may be here, where somebody else's knowledge of generative AI is here. And then in another country, they got robots that's doing this stuff every day that look like you and I, and you can't tell the difference. And so the point is, if you don't know that, then how can you have a conversation about that, let alone plan for your house to be run by generative AI? And you can't even spell AI. That's fair. I mean, so like using using AI as like an example, right? I I I guess like I don't I'm not an expert. I'm not an SMB in 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 using AI at all. This is like, a good subject to talk about. Right, right. <laughs> but like I also I I I I've I've done a little bit of reading about it, so I understand with my business plan. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not an SME subject matter expert, by the way. I just want to make sure I throw it out there. But like I don't want to make sure I I, I like I I don't know it, but I see how I can uh, how it can apply to my business. So that's yes. what I'm thinking. Because you have a business mind. Mm. You worked for a major big four consulting firm. You graduated from a prominent college. Mm. And so your journey, your foundation, if you will, mm. gives you the information, mm. the data, and the intelligence 
to be able to understand the things that another person may not be able to understand because okay. they have not had that exposure or experience. Okay, okay. So Got it, those, everybody. So for those people who grew up like me, mm -hmm. who didn't have money, mm -hmm. didn't have a father, mm -hmm. and didn't have access to a lot of stuff, is that a shaky foundation? I was gonna say I don't think, or that's shaky. is that just the best we have at the time? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't classify that as shaky. The reason why you can easily become, you can have hard work ethic, whether you're in your situation or, or upbringing or my upbringing. I agree. So your foundation is what you make of it. You can be privileged and trash, or you can be poor and very successful. Very, so I mean that that when I think foundation, it's more of an internal thing. Yes, your supporting cast definitely helps shape and mold you. Like for example, I know. My, I don't necessarily care to be detailed oriented, but I know for a fact I can be because I was trained to do that. My right. dad was in the military, so I, all right, I so got to make sure I sleep. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I, so I get that part, but I also had to make sure I carried it with me. But I, I just admit That's it. That's a choice. Yeah, and I, and I just admit it. I did not like it, but something about whatever happened early, growing up reminded me. Well, I mean, I guess I can see the benefit in it. So that's your it, choice. Yeah. So it, it, not it, all people choose to embrace or keep some of the things that they've been trained in. Mm -hmm. And that's their choice, too. Yeah. But I just wanted to say that because, you know, it, it, it when I was saying earlier about shaky foundation, I'm glad you kind of spoke about that real mm -hmm. quick, because. Yeah, like it, it's more about the, the, the person itself or the person themselves. If we're not talking about people. Yeah. I mean. Some foundations appear to be shaky, but if they had no control and, and no choices of the matter, mm -hmm. all right. So I, it could be looked at as shaky. I look at it as unfortunate. It's or different, or you know they just didn't have the means that this person had. Yeah, I mean, it's different motivating. If my way. parents had you know millions of dollars when I wanted to be a DJ at age twelve. Mm -hmm. And me and Grandmaster Flash and Jazz and Jeff would be competing right now, you know. But I didn't have any of that, right? You know, I had to save my money up for two years to go to Radio Shack with my fifty nine dollars, right? <laughs> so, so the point is that the foundation that you have is your starting point. Mm -hmm. And to your point, you know, do you build or expand? Mm -hmm. Well, you can do both. You can grow. But it's still a good choice. Yeah, that's true. You got to move intelligent about that, though. I don't think you want to just be expanding all willy nilly. I don't but you don't know. I mean, but like some, I don't know. Man, most people that have ever been in business have got their stories of trials and errors. But they've done some due diligence, though. And like yeah, some people Marty don't. lived in his car. Stephanie Hash lived in her car. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking. But they had, how can they? Stephanie Mills. Stephanie Miller, I don't even want to talk about her situation, but you know, they got their stories, man. Do you, do, do you think they envision? Because I feel like, like I, so I wanted to be like stand up comedy, you know what I'm saying? That it, it seems nice, it seems appealing, it's still kind of on the itinerary, maybe. Oh, so think, but like, even in that, I kind of have a vision of, okay, well, this is what I'd want things to be like, you know? So, like, I, I would be building on top of the foundation, like, all right, so in terms of jokes, here's what my. Here's what my script would be. Not like not like I'm gonna be reading it off, but like this is what I want to talk about. These are my topics. You all have this all stuff. That. And I feel like that's part of that and foundation. Then when your plan fail, when experience and, and, and the lessons kick in, mm -hmm. you learn more from the things you do wrong than the things you do right. Yep. Military has millions and billions of dollars worth of concept of operations and plans and strategies and everything, you know, that we can just pull off the shelf. But the moment war kicks off. That stuff don't work all the time. Yeah. And it's the same way with life. That's true. That's true. So you can have all of the strategies and plans, and it doesn't do what you're supposed to do. I mean, you know, I wrote a book. It hasn't made a million dollars yet. Both yeah. two. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I wrote another one. And it hasn't made a million dollars. So I wrote two more. I got four books, and together, none of them have made a million dollars yet, right? My strategy, my plan, and everything I wrote, I can sit there with an Excel spreadsheet and be like, all right, if I sell 10 books, I get this. If I sell 10,000, I get this. If I sell, you know, 10, I get, you know, we all can do the math. Mm -hmm. But life and reality has a whole different lesson waiting for you. Yeah. 
And I mean, I guess to, to your point about not knowing what people can do uh, or like how something can go in terms of like building foundation. I do. Um, like I met somebody who's actually telling me they want to write their own book. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, you know what? That's interesting. Because I know somebody who actually writes a bunch, a bunch of books. Like, mm-hmm. like he, he's an author, my boy. He's like, I got you plugged in. But he probably wouldn't have known, hey, you know, I'm, I might have just met some random guy who knows an author. And I can get him connected and give some, give him some advice, stuff like that. Like I might try to plan for it, but no one plans for that. Like you, you don't. I mean, I'm not trying to necessarily because you're for just that. living life. Exactly. So, so like, the point I, of this whole show, you're just living life. Yep. But you're also building upon the things that you've learned throughout that's that history. That's part of living life. That's intelligence. That's hustling. And I mean, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't recognized by now, each episode is probably going to build on top of one another. Uh, the strategy. You know what I mean? Like math. <laughs> like math. I ain't like math growing up, but dad going there. I was in them classes, them advanced classes, like pre cal in, in high school. I was really irritated with that back in the day. I'm not even gonna tell you what my <laughs> highest level of math in high school was. But calculus definitely wasn't on <laughs> I won't try to have it be in mine either. I promise you. <laughs> We're just trying to graduate, man. No, I feel bad. I Algebra feel bad. two was hard. So the point about your the foundation, I mean, you know, we're, we're sharing living life with the audience. And we talked about foundation. I would say that at the end of the day, you've got to have something to stand for. Yeah. And and whether it be um, your your information, your house, your knowledge, your two feet, uh, or your principles, right? And your, and your morals, mm-hmm. you have to have a foundation yep. because that also determines the next step, the next phase, the next layer that you get to go to. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Mario Brothers, right? Foundation is is right there, stage one. Hey. You can't jump and run yeah. and grab something. You're going to be stuck there for a while until you're able to jump, run, and grab something Yeah, because that's the foundation mm-hmm. Of the next level. Mm-hmm. Now you got to run faster, jump over stuff, grab multiple things because you need to use what you grab yep. in order to do other things. And so now your foundation becomes even more solid. Yeah. And by the time you get to level 10, mm-hmm. you have a solid foundation for Mario Brothers. Yeah. Man, you, life is like Mario Brothers. You know, you, you, <laughs> you, you want to know somebody who I've actually grown to sort of dislike over the last couple, I don't know, about weeks, months, maybe. Grown to dislike? Yeah, it's grown to dislike, but he's still one of my favorites. It's crazy when you hear about it. It's crazy just to say it out loud. But I'm, I'm starting to. Who and why? I'm starting to dislike Steph Curry. And the reason why I say that is this. He makes, the brother makes it look so daggone easy out there that I feel like people think, oh, I need to shoot three pointers. That's all I need to do. I need to practice my three. So why pointers. you just like them? Because people don't realize, and I'm not. I'm, I'm joking. Isn't he like I, I'm joking. Husband, I'm not, father, no, no, I'm not. I don't have. I don't, I don't have brother, any qualms with Steph cousin, Curry. Be cool. You know what I'm saying? He makes it more. He makes the game more appealing. I, I'm not really hating on Steph, but like jokingly at the same time, you watch Steph Curry and you might think, oh, he's just a three point shooter. But what Steph actually did. He can play golf too. No, he golf. Like he, he can play. He, he's a good athlete. He's a good athlete. Yeah. But what he did to be able to golf and show, hey, you can pay attention to me golf too, is he started working on his shot inside and worked out. So he built a strong foundation, getting his form right, right. on the inside. Right. And then he expanded. Right. And then, well, everybody wanted to focus on the expansion, the glow up, as the kids call. But they don't focus on the ugly days. Y'all weren't with him shooting in the gym. So that foundation of like Steph Curry just has a solid work ethic, period. Yeah. And so no matter what he does, he's going to put that work ethic into it. Yeah. Whether but it he, be basketball, whether it be Subway sandwiches, or whether it be, you know, playing golf or even being, you know, a husband, a father mm-hmm. or, or whatever, you know, he's pre-wired with a foundation of a work ethic. Mm-hmm. He's going to be 50 years old one day, 60 years old one day, right? And he won't be doing all of this stuff, but he'll be doing something else with that same work. Said, yeah. Look at Shaquille O'Neal. Dude never stops. Yeah, Shaq's still working. I mean, he has a work ethic. 
Except that, except for when he was at the free throw line. I'm just saying, ah, he missed on the free throws. Everybody doesn't have the same gift as you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Now look, that man was getting paid millions of dollars. You could have made some free throws, Shaq. That's all I'm saying. You brought me three chips though, so I ain't really mad. So we could have got a couple more. That's all I'm saying, big fella. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> man, not everybody don't have the same. Uh, or those players did come up with good foundation. I'm actually curious what what Steph's upbringing was like. I mean, we we saw like you know little clips and stuff. You might hear about Talk things, but. I mean, Steph, if you if if you're interested, hey, come on the I show. Mean, we're not mad at you. He's a primate creature like the rest of us, right? Yeah, but his phone is hard to get at the now. <laughs> All right. Well, one day he might make it to a certain level where he wants to talk to you. So, be, so therefore, ready. you know, this is your foundation. Yep, I'm trying to build you know, up in the public like eye, and eventually he's going to know who you are. Oh. And when that day happens, y'all may be sitting down talking over a subway sandwich and some chips and whatever you drink. <laughs> and uh, he got a little drink out there too. He got himself some alcohol out there. So I mean, yeah. he's a businessman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been Jay Z. Jay Z's extreme, right? Mm -hmm. He goes from let's just say he goes from 14 years old doing whatever he was doing, right, to a billionaire able to help so many people. That's what. And so it's a mindset. It's a work ethic, but. What about those people that don't have the same uh, opportunities as, as Steph or as Jay Z? Mm -hmm. Are they on shaky foundation? No. Sometimes it's just living life, man, and you never know how things are gonna happen, right? That's true. That's true. I mean, Richard Pryor, one of the greatest comedians ever, right? But in order to be that, the stuff he had to go through in yeah. life to be able to tell those stories, uh, I don't know if I want that million. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I want that foundation to have those millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just be Reggie B going through my stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think one day, you know, Steph will probably know who you are. At that point, you can have an honest conversation with him about how he grew up, how you grew up. Y'all may learn from each other. That's, That's just living. Yeah, no, that'll be. A, I just want to say, Steph, that'll be a great conversation to have, my boy. I've already got some things on the in the topics to discuss too, by the way. I'm just letting you know that right now. I, trust me. I, 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 yeah, no, but not. It would be a great. Don't treat like too I'm not. I'm not. But as right now, it would be like, like right now, point in time, that Steph said, yeah, I got you. There's going to be like 30 seconds. I'm not to him. There's going to be at least 30 seconds worth of like, I'm a fanboy real quick. It's so like, oh my God, I can't believe I can't. All right, after that, we good. Though. Get it out. Yeah, you got to get out of the system. You got to act like you're going to learn some things from you. Right? Well, hopefully. And, and, and bro, so. Anyway, next subject. Is I was about to say, I mean, that was, I mean, that, shoot, that was going to be the end of it outside of the flowers segment. Like, did did you have anything? Yeah. Did you have anybody in terms of flowers that you want to give? Which what flowers are, ladies and gentlemen, for those of y'all who don't know, we just giving some, a tip of the cap, if you will, to somebody, whether it's famous or somebody who we know, just giving them their flowers because not all people do that. So, Reggie, who, who, who you got? So, there's this guy. By the name of Will Kaepernick. He's a brother of Kaepernick's son. He's a golden heritage brother, which means he's been in the bond for over 50 years. And he was my ADP, helped me along my way to become a member of this fraternity. And ever since I crossed, he has always been in touch with me, looked out for me, given me advice, listened to me, mentored me, steered me in many different directions. And he's getting old now, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, his his line name was Yellow Cab, right? And, and you can imagine. But the point is, I'm thankful for him mm -hmm. because if it wasn't for him, I might not be where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I might not know what I know. My journey might not have gone in the direction that it went because mm -hmm. he knew me before I retired from the military. And he helped me through my navigating of those challenges. And so I'm thankful for him. And so, yeah, I, I want to give him, I don't know which flowers to give him because <laughs> we give roses, do I give tulip, do I give bird, par paradise, you know, or, or, or what do I give him? Do I give him some flowers, the big ones, the little ones? So, but, you know, I'll give him a bouquet of an assortment of yeah. flowers to Brother Will Calloway, who is a member. Of the greatest fraternity in the world, Captain Son. And also Alexander Fairfax, alumni of Chapman. 
That's my flowers. How about you? That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Um, yeah. I, I one of these. I was gonna say two real fast because one of them I do actually know. The other one, I don't really know. Him. But he went through some uh, traumatic experience, which we don't really necessarily know. I'm trying to figure out what happened. But Jamie Fox, you know, he was going through some things. Kind of everybody was kind of like, you know, let's keep everything hush. Apparently, he's a, a private person. But something that's kind of big for me was there, there there are three people that I did not know from an actor's side that I really took a liking to. It was, it was Jamie Foxx, mm -hmm. Will Smith, mm -hmm. and Martin Lawrence. Mm -hmm. So like if you ever notice me, there's something about there's something about them and their characters that I try to like actually include in my day-to-day -day life. Like for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So like when, when I heard something was happening to Jamie Foxx. I respect Fox, all three of them. And I'm from Philly. You know, good guy. And, and, and so at least seen. they all I mean they're human. Yeah. <laughs> so I said at least they seem. Like I don't know them personally. I mean, like, people would think you're a good guy. Right. Well, people might think I'm a good guy. But there's some elements about me yeah, that's no. not good at all. I just say yeah, that they said <laughs> last time we had ugly mo ugly elements. So I mean, I, this is pristine. Right? So I, I chalk it up to that, you know, uh I'm human. Right. But yeah, they're human and I respect their journey mm -hmm. as humans. Exactly. So you want to give all three of them flowers? No, no, no. I was talking about just Jamie Foxx because he's the one who went through the ordeal and he's now out of harm's way. Uh, I remember I just wrote down a couple of notes. I remember on May 12th, he was, uh, no, I'm sorry, he was admitted to a hospital. Was hospitalized. Yeah, in, in April 11th. Right. And then by May 12th, you know, he, there's reports he playing pickleball. So apparently he's supposed to be good, but he's not really talking. So mm -hmm. that mental health piece that we were talking about earlier Seemed like that might have been kicking. He was still down and whatnot. Uh, but then on July 21st, he made a, his first public statement where he's saying he's healthy. And I really like that. Uh, for one, he finally came out that he's healthy. But two, he did it on my birthday. So we appreciate you, Jamie. Three, we had August 16th. He finally says he's back to himself. And he just said, you know, I want you. He, will, he wants you to see him laughing, having a good time, partying, cracking a joke, doing a movie, television shows. Uh, he didn't want us to see him with tubes running out of his mm -hmm. nose, out of him, you know, trying to figure out if he was going to make it through. That is the ugly scene, like the picture. Like if, like if I had seen it, I might have teared up a little bit. I ain't going to lie to you. Like I, I broke down when Kobe, mess, when Kobe passed away. That would kind of be on a similar scale. So I mean, I mean these I, are your heroes, right? Yeah. You, know, you so, don't ever want to see your heroes in that state where they're not strong. Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, it, it just does something. Mm -hmm. it's, but, like, it's like kids seeing their parents. You know, so. Exactly. Or your grandparents, whomever. And I appreciate him for thinking of fans mm -hmm. while he's sick. Mm -hmm. It's hospital. I understand you want to be private, but every celebrity out here will come back and say, hey, I'm doing better, ladies and gentlemen. Like, you know, like they want to do that. Say what's going on. Like, he, he doesn't want us to see him like that. So I, I appreciate that. He was showing he cares about other folks. Because, I mean, some people might feel like, hey, that's a downer on, on them. So I appreciate that. And also, I just want to give my, some flowers to my boy Chris. I ain't saying last names, no government. But uh, no, he is a PE teacher now for a school system out here. So I just want to give my man his flowers because he's been telling me like so often. Chris, how he, you were telling me about? Um, the young man? So, I mean, I, I know two Chris's, actually three. So many Chris's the young now. man that you were going to have. Maybe. No, different one. But he, <laughs> but he could also fall in that same boat. Well, he is in that same boat. He could, yeah. So, but he he's a PE teacher now. Got it. So, I mean, he also What's tells up, Chris? me, yes, and he, he tells me all the time how many jobs he's getting and whatnot, how many jobs he's applying to. So, like the fact that you know he, he he's a PE teacher now, mm -hmm. like bro, I'm happy for you, my guy. So, I just wanted to give those two flowers for those two because again, Chris is somebody who supported me. Jamie will be supporting me at some point in time. Jamie Fox. Yeah, I said hopefully. Like, <laughs> hopefully, I'll be supporting me. Fox is cut. <laughs> Maybe it's two different fox. It's two different. Oh, he could be the son of Red Fox. Mm, that would be a good. You should have. Yeah, you should have gone with that, Jamie. You should have gone with that. I don't think it is, <laughs> but you definitely should have gone with that one. Like a fun fact, I do say. But he is sly. He is. He is. He is. <laughs> and I think that could work too. I, I jokingly say Jimmy Butler is Michael Jordan's son. Okay. So I mean, you're just Jimmy Jeffrey Jordan right there. Now you're in basketball. Yeah. They look. They so look, is it true that Michael Jordan's son? Mary, oh yeah, Mary. They're gonna get that. They're gonna get that seventh ring. <laughs> Why are you laughing so hard? Because it's so Why is it messed up that two people who love each other decide to get married? <laughs> That's not my messed up part. Listen, I'm. Why is it messed I, up? It's cool for y'all. I'm just saying. 
like Jordan, it, it's it's like to me, she saw she saw a young man grew up. You know what I'm saying? Like she was around when he was probably born, or it was like when he was young, like both five. And now oh, she's that much older than he is. Gotta be, gotta be, because she was like married him? to Pippin. And they were teammates. Uh, so it's like when you think about it. I don't know. Yeah, they were so that would be like she tried to marry you. Essentially. Mm. Like, like <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not mad at her because she doing what she she doing what she do. But like, maybe cool. they in love. I, I, again, I'm not trying to go, I'm not trying to throw shade on on their love. I I'm I'm not. I wish everybody the best in life. I don't know. It's just certain I don't pairing, all of that kind certain, of like that. certain. I'm too pairing. busy living my life to be. No, I hear you, things. but like you gotta, you gotta watch the last dance, and then well, see, I gotta watch. Well, the that's the reason why you get a little context. So what happened was it was really a story about Jordan, okay. but like Scotty feels like you know what my story won't told. It. So now everybody loved Jordan, but he feel like he not getting his just due. Okay. So now to feel like your second fiddle, you already called the Robin in the Batman to Robin duo. Mm-hmm. People don't like Robin. Robin's one of my favorite characters, and he turned into Nightwing. He becomes his own man. Shout out to you, Robin. But like, they don't look at Scotty Pippen that way. So now you're gonna be thought of as a joke because your 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 ex wife is marrying Jordan's youngest son. Like 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 uh, that's tough. That's tough. That's a little like you already behind. You already in the shadows of Jordan. So back to the mental piece, right? Because I am an executive leadership coach, and I coach leaders and at all levels. Mm-hmm. And so for him, it comes down to how he chooses to approach this. How he chooses to, I mean, it's heavy, it's hard, but you can choose for it not to be, right? Yeah. I was just having this conversation with somebody. Who controls your brain? You or other people? So the mass media is going to do what it does, right? His ex-wife gonna do what she did, right? And and everybody else out there in the world are gonna think what they think. Yeah. And to your point, if they think that he's Robin, all right. But he gets to choose who he is. Yeah. He gets to choose how he thinks. He gets to choose how he receives this information. Yeah. Because aside from basketball and and all that goes with it, he may be something else. Right? I mean, yeah, he's much more than just a former and, 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 and to that extent, that should be important as well. Mm-hmm. And whether everybody else believes it, knows it, sees it, it's, it's the only thing that matters is him. Yeah. He believes it, knows it, and sees it. And he has the intestinal fortitude and the strength to know who he is, right? And based on his purpose in life, he's doing that to plug into my book, right? Becoming the best version of himself. Then what does any of this other stuff have to do with him being the best version of himself other than their potential distractions? I think he's had a problem with distractions before. I think you question sometimes Scotty's mental fortitude. Granted, six-time champion. You know what I'm saying? Like He, he has a well-decorated career. And at minimum, the second option on them championship runs. Like, let's not go ahead and let's, let's not slight this man. But he 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 does come off like he, he I, so he took a contract year, or he took a contract one year where it's like it was looking back hindsight it was a stupid contract. He got paid far lower than what he should have. And I feel like you didn't bet on yourself. Yeah, he was injured too, but like that confidence factor I think you've seen throughout Scottie Pippen's career is not as strong as you might think Jordan's is or Kobe's is or even Braun's for that matter. Like I I, I think I, it's more than confidence, right? Because think that for instance we don't know everybody's upbringing right and their experience and the, the stuff that they had to go through that made them who they are right <clears throat> including their decision making parameters so when you talk about jordan i mean i don't know how many lawyers in the entire nba who are all rooting for him to be successful so they're going to help him to make his decisions yeah and, and and you talked about kobe and other folks right to that extent everybody wasn't helping Body, like they were helping other people. So he didn't have the resources. Remember we were talking about resources? That's fair. He didn't have the same resources. He didn't have the same mentors. He didn't have the same, you know, folks that support other people supporting him. Right. So in, in essence, maybe he had to make these decisions for himself, mm-hmm. you know? And so, yeah, he may have made a bad decision, but he made it based on how he is able to process the data, 
and the information to understand the intelligence to make a decision. I don't think he probably wanted to make a stupid decision out the gate and be like hindsight 2020. Right. You know, I think he probably thought he was making a good decision for him. But it's based on his training and his knowledge mm -hmm. and the inputs he had as a businessman. I mean, yeah. he's a ball player, right? Yeah, he's a he was a businessman. So at the time, was he a solid businessman with experience? Knowledge. Did he understand yeah. the financial um, industry? Right. Did he right. understand investments? Did he understand all of the legal stuff? Right. You know, or was he too busy doing his job playing ball? So, you know, not saying I'm defending him, but I understand that me that mentality mm -hmm. because many of us have that. Right. Right. I mean, shoot, I got my best friend, he had a mother and a father. Mm -hmm. I only had a mother. Mm -hmm. His dad was one of the first common police court judges of Philadelphia. Totally different lifestyle, right? Yeah. But we were best friends, grew up together. Right. I ain't had it. And so, therefore, now, I mean, he's a he's a surgeon. Mm -hmm. I could never have had that journey, right? right? Going out of high school, going to Duke, majoring in biochemical engineering, going to Pitt, majoring in medicine. That wasn't even in my cards right. at all. So I say that because we don't know what was Scotty Pippen's cause. Like I know they had like there to be fair, he has I don't think they I don't think he's had the documentary. If he has, I apologize, Scotty. I ain't seen it. But I don't think he's had that documentary the way yeah, but Jordan why, had but it. Why, why aren't people but I feel like that's I feel like that's a him thing. Jordan got his out there clear as day. But so, I mean but why aren't people coming to him? Why aren't they approaching him? And if they are, then he may have his ways of communicating. It's just not at the same level of emotional intelligence needed to be able to do the things that the industry wants to do because he sees it his way and that goes back to how's he been trained well i mean if he sees something his way and he wants to have a documentary out there he got enough oh I, i'm sorry i do i don't want i don't like counting people's pockets but i'd like to assume he got enough money to create his own documentary like scotty if you want bro you can hire me I, i'll I, <laughs> i'll do it real hey I, we, we talk about finances later but i promise you we'll get a quality job done and I, I'll, I'll even say screw Michael. Like, go ahead. I promise you. I don't. Not to go. But he may not even want that smoke, right? Because when you put yourself out there like that, something's coming back. Yeah, but you're telling your story though. Like, I'd rather him tell his story, his side of the story. Maybe get your ready. story out there. Robert I, I guess. Walters could have told her story a lot earlier. Okay. She waited. Okay. To I a mean, lot of those people were dead. Well, see, if you <laughs> wait <laughs> though, story. I mean, but if you wait too long, like, like. I wonder how that's going. I feel like you're pinting up so much. And if you don't let it out, like I you feel that way. Well, I, I'm I'm wor I'm worried about that. Because again, to me, he's not the most mentally, <laughs> I'm not trying to say stable person, but like he's not the most like strong, he's not that he's not that strong minded type of guy. Like he's cool, but like I I can see something like his ex-wife marrying Jordan's kid, like. It Call, just, causing a snap. Yeah, just because it's Jordan. It cause just, I'd be a little tight. I'd, I'd be a little pissed. It cause like, anybody. I'd be a little hurt. This is real. He's like, a, he's living his life. Yeah, this is real stuff. But that's what I'm saying. I'm worried about it because like it's no it's no knock to him. It, it, if, if this happened to anybody, you're you're drinking for the rest of the weekend gla gladly, and then repeating for the next couple months. Like it's a bad time. He may have the problem. If, if you see it, other people see it. That's fair. That's and fair. if other people see it, I mean, he's got friends and family. That's fair. That's who've fair. been around him his entire life. Well, who know him better than the media, and you know his boys he grew up with that can step to him and be like, "Yo, you know," and 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 and, and had that kind of chat. And so, hopefully. yeah, I mean, he got people. Hopefully, he got a strong foundation. And back to the, to you know, the what I'm saying, yeah, hopefully, he had a strong. Well, it was still all on the show. It was yeah, all true. Yeah, I must say it was all. It was, we we was really about to hit the flowers part. We did. So that's all. So, so, so I mean, on end at the flowers part. I mean, so we was about done, but then we kind of did an extra lap or two. So I apologize for that again, ladies and gentlemen. We apologize for that. No, we, we don't. Apologize. This is good in life. This is what we do. This is your show and my <laughs> show. So you know, we can edit it however we want to edit it. Oh, this was but you know, this was timely, and we were talking about you know Jamie Foxx, mm -hmm. and then we started talking about you know celebrities mm -hmm. and what they go through. And uh, then we start. I think I'm the one that brought up the, the, the Jordan and the Pippen piece. And I don't really know that much about it other than you know, the fact that something's going on. 
Yeah. And you seem to know more about it than I did. Just love it. Just so love you it. took just it and ran it. with it. <laughs> and now we all up in Scotty Pippen's head. Yeah. I mean, Jordan may be the one that needs to go get up. You never know. Oh, yeah. But hey, 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 maybe though, because he he's ultra competitive. It seems like he don't sleep. I know that whole him selling the Hornets thing. Now, I don't know. He, I don't think he just I mean, stole the, the Hornets. Suppose Jordan said to his son, "Don't marry that girl." Like I, last year, or six months ago, or even three weeks ago, and then all of a sudden, boom, Dad, I'm doing what I want to do. I could see. <laughs> I could see the alternative though. I could see Jordan being a little petty and being like, "You know what? I just kind of want to play with Scott." No, you don't get. This. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't know Joy. I, I do not know MJ for Adam. So please do not think that I'm reporting anything. You don't get to use. Your I'm just style saying. To do that. I can see bro being a little petty. And then on the golf course, being seen that Scotty be like, Scotty. No. I see we got that seventh <laughs> ring. You throwing shade now. See, we're trying to take the energy of our community and our people in a more different direction than just selling ratings. And, and and doing the things that people expect, right? Right. You know, and so to that end, it gives Jordan and Pippen an opportunity to show the community and the world, you know, how to be a good leader. Yeah. You know, and, and how they show their children how they are going to represent in this time. Yeah. And so as leaders, because they are leaders, they lead by example. Yeah. So my my curiosity would be, what example are they going to set right now? Oh, Scotty can make some. Yeah, yeah. Scotty can make out like a bandit in this situation. It's looking grim early on, but I mean, plays his cards right. After the fact, they might they could divorce. Who knows? Divorce rates are quite high. I'm not wishing that upon nobody. Knock on wood. But like, so he's got to live his life. But this is going to be psychoanalyzed by everybody, especially in the hip hop community. Oh yeah. And the question is, you know, what would we really like to see in terms of positive come out of this? I want everybody to be happy. So whatever it takes for Joy peace and happiness. Exactly. I want both I, I, I may I want Scotty to be happy. So whatever that need, whatever he needs from that, as long as it doesn't deter from um from, from Marcus and, and and the soon to be Mr. Jordan. Like that's what I'm hoping for, honestly. Because like I said, it's all fun and games, it sounds cool. There's nice taglines and everything, but like I just want them to be happy. Yeah, yeah. Because there's not. A, I mean, their lives are not affecting our day to day outside of just not us talking at about all. it. Oh, I mean, I often have conversations with people. The folks that are sitting there in the field, on the court, in the game, are not necessarily worried about all the spectators. Spectators are yelling at the TV, mm-hmm. yelling at the floor, yelling at the jumbotron, getting all upset, and all of that yelling has no impact whatsoever on the next shot. No, or the next throw mm-hmm. or the next catch. It's just life, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, to that extent, it's all entertainment until it's not. Exactly. Exactly. You know, but I mean, all right. I'm about to say that sounds like a good way to end the show right there. I don't it's know. All entertainment think. until it's not. Exactly. Because <laughs> when it's not, it's actually a living life. That's the quality one. That's the quality one, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but listen, thank you all for listening. Hope you all enjoyed it so far. Please like, subscribe, comment, tell anyone who's anyone about the show. Uh, my name is Trey, and as you heard earlier, this is Reggie. And, uh, you know, we're just on uh, Just Living Life. That's what <laughs> that's what we on today. So hope you all enjoyed it. Take care. Yo, yo. Yo, yo.